today you need to call your friends right now and tune in i'm pastor vince shot from glad tidings in beautiful british columbia god is moving as never before the spirit of the lord is being poured on the earth and people are being transformed glad tidings right at this moment we're involved in ukraine we're really involved in israel in the philippines we're in china we're in india we're in Uganda. we're in liberia all over mexico we just sent a large sum of money to mexico god is using this place and i am so grateful for the team and furthermore, I want to tell you, we're not going to ask for money. We're not going to sell some trinkets or some holy water from, from Chilliwack. We're not going to do it. The gospel, this program, has been paid for by all the members of Glad Tidings. I want to commend you. I want to commend the team, the editing team, everybody involved, and our station. This has been a great station for us to broadcast, so we're grateful. Today, I have a word for you. Listen to me closely. No, you listen up. There is a call of God in your life. There is a reason God put you on the earth. And I'm going to let you know, every devil in hell would come against you to try to talk you out of why you're on the earth. You're not here just to work a job for 40 years and die. You're not here just simply to go on a cruise and die. You're here by the divine purposes of God. There's a place for you, every one of you have a call of God on your life. And a lot of you, the greatest thing, you can be duped and not even know God has a specific hand plan on you. And you don't even know it. And you live your whole life unsatisfied. You never really did what you were intended to do. And because of that, the eternal purposes of God Almighty on your life never happen. There's a place. There's a scenario, there's a situation, and there is a preparation of your life to do what God wants you to do. You know, here I am on television, whoop-de-doo, but here I am. But no one saw the preparation that I had to cooperate with God to be here today. It wasn't just one step here. It was not because... Not because education will put you in ministry, but I was kind of a slow child, so I need a little help. I need to study a little more than the rest of you because I'm kind of like the slow kid. I'm the only one I know. I've never met a person like me who flunked kindergarten. Hello, wake up somebody. The brain wasn't working. But God took me on a slow path. I was in Cedar Woolley, Washington a wonderful little rural community, a logging town, for four years. Not four days, for four years of preparing me just to be a servant in the house of God. I was in school. Once again, I didn't flunk kindergarten, but I was not the smartest kid in the class at, at school. I went seven years to school. I went many years. I was in a gymnasium, started a church for five years. Five years in a gymnasium, and nobody came. I pastored for another 13 years, step by step by step by step. It didn't happen quickly. But I said yes to the call of God in my life, and guess what? Here we are right now. And we're being broadcasted actually around the world. It didn't happen. And for God to use you, because there is a call of God in your life, you're going to have to say to God, I'll do whatever it takes, whatever it costs, but God use my life for your glory. Brother, wonderful, uh, brother from India. He was my hero in the faith. Brother Everett Rowell. And he would say, the master wants to use you. Will you surrender? And he'd lift his hands to God and say, use all of me. Whatever it costs, whatever it takes, I say yes to you, Lord Jesus. Come on, put that ass together! Come on, make some noise! 我爱耶稣,因为他是我的救主. 在门阿西希,耶稣基督. 耶稣基督, 
Tuhan dan penyelamatku. Namogo ten sagihau mamogo tawi nao. Koyo moce kumatse anos. Nampenda Yesu, Yesu ni mokozi wangu. Listen to the scripture right here. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 24. He who called you is faithful. Now hear this word. God will be faithful in your life. It's interesting. We had a young man that grew up in this church and uh, was here his whole life. And he had a dream in his heart. It was deep in his heart to be on staff at Glad Tidings. And kind of everybody looked at him like, he's just a silly, dumb kid. You know, you never, he just kind of thinking crazy thoughts, but he had it in his heart. And I came here, and I didn't make it easy for him. I didn't. I really, really didn't. That some of the skill sets weren't there, and so I brought in someone and paid him. I paid this person, and this young man wanted the job, but he wasn't ready yet. I paid someone else, and he had to go through that process. And then I got even nastier. He said, I want to be on staff, Pastor. I said, well, I need a letter from your wife. No, no grown man wants his wife to write him a letter. Are you kidding me? Here, honey, write me a letter. But I wanted her heart to believe in him. I wanted her faith to stand with him. And there really wasn't any opportunity. There really wasn't. But there was a little one. There was a custodian company that we had hired to clean the building. And this young man said, I'll do it. I'll clean the building. And he said, I don't care what you pay me. I just want to serve you, Pastor, and I want to serve this house. Well, his insistence and willingness, he forced me to give him opportunity. Now, I, I, I don't know if he had enough up here, I'll be honest with you right now. You know, I'm not saying he was slow, but I'm not saying he was a rocket scientist either. But it was in him, and he was willing to submit. Can I tell you this young man is producing this program today? A kid who wanted in. Now, we got the big man with us right now. We got the deacon who oversees everything. But this young man produces the whole program. How did that happen? There was a call of God on his life. Time tried to talk him out of it. His age tried to talk him out of it. People tried to talk him out of it. He heard some things he didn't want to hear, tried to talk him out of it. But he's here producing this program. And this program is going around the world. Fascinating. See, it says here, 1 Thessalonians 5.24, he who is calls you, he who calls you is faithful. Now let me give you another scripture. It's found in Romans 11.29. For the gifts and callings of God are irrevocable. So yes, there is a call on your, on your life. You've got to get a hold of this. It might be a call to business. It might be the high calling of a mom to raise up godly children. It, it might be the high calling to be a usher, the head usher in the church, but there is a call of God on your life, and it's real. And here's the good news about this thing. It's irrevocable. I got someone else producing the program. He was a military man. He never did television. Never. But something was in him. God used my life. God used me. He retires from the military. I, I'm telling you, I don't think this guy could take a picture and he took it at your face. He'd probably just get the feet. There was no abilities he had. But here's what he did. I want to tell you what he did. We had, hired a guy, brought him in, he did it. And he sat there for a year and a half and just watched and watched and watched. And watched and served and listened and did what he's told. And he was kind of the bottom of the food chain when it came to television. And this other guy, we just couldn't keep him. Well, the military man was ready then. And we produced a program that went all through Norway and Scandinavia. We had a weekly program, and he produced the whole thing. Why? Because the call on your life is irrevocable. And the call on Josh's life was irrevocable. And the call on Jerry's life is irrevocable. See, God calls. He's faithful. And nothing can take away the call of God in your life except you. Come on, put your hands together. Did you know that there is somebody that you can talk to that will listen? 
He won't judge you. He cares about your feelings. He understands where you are and he loves you. That's Jesus Christ. Let me read you a scripture. James 5.16 says, The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man or woman availeth much. Wow, that's beautiful. And that really reminds me of a scripture also in Psalm chapter 46 that says that God is within her and He's with her. He helps her at the break of dawn, which means from the moment we get up, from the break of dawn, anytime we can already come to Jesus and He's there. And you know, we can talk to Jesus about anything. And one of the best things we can do is just go aside somewhere and just verbally open your mouth and just talking to Jesus. He wants to hear your voice. He loves you. That's right. And it's funny that you say verbally because so like it's so true that sometimes we just think and think to ourselves right. and we think we're praying but we're just talking to ourselves and complaining that's right and a rabbit trail you know mm -hmm. we might god can read your mind mm -hmm. but he wants to hear your voice mm -hmm. and we are more effective we are more fervent when we open our mouth and speak to Jesus directly. Mm -hmm. I'm Pastor Jody Ann Schott from Glad Tidings Church in Vancouver, and this is Angela, my dear friend, and we're here to remind you that God can, He will, and He wants to. Come on, put your hands together. I always hear this, Pastor, I'm just not a good person. Well, I know that about you. You don't have to convince me. Well, I've done horrible things, Pastor. Oh, I'm sure you've done more than you're going to tell me. But the blood of Jesus, the precious blood of Jesus, gives every one of us a new start. And every one of us, our names are written in the book of life because we put our faith in Jesus and the cross in His precious blood. And so this bit about, woe is me, I'm a dreadful sinner, that's old news. No, you're a saint because of the blood of Jesus, and anything is possible. God can use anybody. Can I go down a list of different people in the Bible, who they really were and how God used them? And who you really are, we could broadcast it across Canada on this program, who you really are. What does God say you are? What can God do with someone who says yes and they submit their life to him? Jacob was a deceiver. This dude could pass a lie detector test. He was the deceiver. He was so deceptive. He could, he could deceive himself. He tricked Satan. I mean, this guy was crazy. That's who he was. But he became Israel. He became the father of the nation, even though not what he was, what he became. Let me give you another name, Rahab the harlot. I don't even know her last name. I just know the girl was nasty. I just know the girl was bad. I know she was a homewrecker. And she became the great, great, great grandmother to the king of Israel, David. You see, God's the qualifier. You have to be willing. You have to say, here I am, Lord. I give you my will. I give you my talent. I give you my time. Because there's a call of God in your life. And some of you are miserable. You're just miserable. You can only watch so many stupid football games. You can only play so many video games. You can only go on so many cruises before you're seasick. But there's a call of God in your life. Let me give you another one. Peter, he was a very skilled swearer. That the only person I knew who could swear like Peter was my father-in-law. He could do multiple swear words in a row, <laughs> sound like a sentence, and then he got born again. But he could swear. He was very, I think he had a master's degree in swearology. He could just swear. And, and Peter, every time he was under any kind of pressure, he just swear, 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 swear here, swear there, everywhere, swear, swear. That's what he did. He even cussed out a kid with swear words. How embarrassing to swear in front of kids. And he wasn't even drunk. But God used him. God used him. God used him all over the earth. Let's go another one. How about Thomas? What a, what a wonderful man of no faith. His name is Doubting Thomas. That's his name. He just Anything you said that was truth, I don't believe that. I don't believe that. But God used him. How about this person? 
<laughs> Moses, good guy. You always want someone on your staff who's a murderer. He's a murderer, for heaven's sakes. But God used him. God can use you. Can I? Esther, she was an orphan. She was abandoned. And then she was a slave. She was an orphan and a slave. But God made her the queen of Israel, the queen of all the lands with all power. Because she, what? Mordecai brought her a word. He said, deliverance is coming from the, for the Jews, but if it doesn't come through you, it'll come through somebody. And she said, here I am, Lord. I want you to take a moment, regardless of what you're living like, and just say to God, here I am. Here I am. I'm a, I'm a drunk. I'm a teenage fool. I'm out of control. Jesus met me. And here's what I said. Whatever you want, I'll do it. Whatever you want. I was the only child. I was bashful. Only one thing I couldn't do is speak in front of people. I've spoke to millions of people. Here I am, Lord. And right now with your life, see, the problem with your business, it's your business. And God called you to business, but you've taken it. And you would take your business that's failing. You take your marriage that's failing, your children that are failing. God, I give them to you. I really mean it. I give you my heart. I give you my will. I give you my business. I give you my marriage. I give you my children. And watch and see what God will do. You see, God takes ordinary and does extraordinary. And he'll do it in your life, too. This Easter, for the first time ever, Glad Tidings Church in Vancouver, BC is putting on a wonderful production titled, Jesus, Not Just Stories. Join with us through dancing and acting and song as we commemorate the miracles and the wonders of Jesus' life, because Jesus truly was not just a story. Our production will be held on March 29th at 7 p.m., as well as March 31st at 10.30 a.m. in the morning. We truly can't wait to see you there. Join us this Easter because this is a production you wouldn't want to miss. Just to bring something that's of worth that could bless your heart. I'll bring you more than a song, for a song in itself is not what you have required. You search much deeper with. Way things appear, you're looking into my heart. I'm coming back to the heart of worship, and it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the things I've when it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you, Jesus. Come on, put your together. There is a call of God on your life. You hear me right now that heaven is calling you, there's something for you, and it's irrevocable. You have blown it, you've shaken your fist at God, you've done your own thing, and it's not working. Now turn your life to Jesus. Right now say, Jesus, forgive me. I've lived for myself, I've wronged you, I've disobeyed you, but Jesus, forgive me. And I surrender my life to you, I believe that you're God, I believe you died on the cross and shed your blood. 
and I want you to forgive me, Jesus, and I want you to come into my life, Jesus, and I give you my will, my life, and my future. God will take care of the past, but right now you've got to position yourself with a future with God. A few other people that God called. I love this one, Timothy. Timothy was known as a dog, half Jew, half Greek. Here is this kid born in the wrong family. And some of you feel like I've been born in the wrong family. God can take the wrong family and make it the right family. Half Jew, half Greek, called a dog who pastored the greatest church in the New Testament in Ephesus. Most theologians believe it grew to 20,000 people. Can you imagine that? But he said to the Lord, yes. His mother and his grandmother, devoted to God, prayed this kid right into this pastorate. And he was a personal son to the Apostle Paul, a nobody who said, yes, God can use you. God can use your life. God can even use your broken marriage and your family. God can use anything if you give it to him. Here we go. David, he was only 17 years old. Are you kidding me? And he was what? Anointed the king, but he had to say yes. Where did they find him? Honoring his father on the backside of the desert. All of his brothers thought, oh, I'm going to be the king. Look at me. But he said, not the one, not the one, but the one who was obeying his father. They found him. He was at the exact place, Jesse said, be here. And the prophet said, I'm not going to sit down until he arrives. Now listen to me. Are you doing what Father wants you to do? Are you in the right place? Get in the right place right now. And I'll promise you this. If you're out of church, guaranteed you're in the wrong place. If somehow, well, the church was fighting and this happened and we got a new pastor, get yourself in church right now. It's the will of God. Planted in the house of the Lord, you'll flourish. The one thing I want from God, the thing I seek most of all, is what? The privilege to meditate in His temple all the days of my life. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of God than dwell in the tent of the wicked. God can't find you unless you get back in His house. Right now, find a Bible-believing, I'm going to say it, Holy Ghost. They believe in the power of God church. And God will speak to you and use your life again. Abraham was 100 years old. A hundred, dude. 100 years old. But what does the Word say? The Word of God says that you got a miracle son because he believed God. He's known as the father of faith. He blew it. He said, my wife's not my wife. It's my sister. That's a dumb thing to say. Men, aren't you happy you're not the only dumb, dumb? Abraham was dumb too. He did a lot of dumb things. But he realigned himself with God, and he heard the word of the Lord. And the word of the Lord said, you're going to have a miracle son. And I believe there's a word for you. I believe everything in me, there's a word for you. And you're going to have miracles. Yes, you're going to have miracles, because God's going to use your life for his glory. Come on, put your hands together. Glad Tidings Children's Church now meets in the Tree Fort. Your children will experience the presence of God and have fun doing it as they have church kid style. Learning about the love of Jesus with games, puppets, praise, and worship. Ages 5 through 12, everyone is welcome. Our nursery at Glad Tidings is a fun and safe place for your little ones to play and learn about the love of God. Our goal is to support parents in building a Christian foundation through a nurturing church. Hi, and welcome to Glad Tidings Church, located at 3456 Fraser Street. My name is Josh, and I'd like to invite you, if you're 13 to 18, or grade 8 to grade 12, to come and join us at our youth group. Our youth group meets every Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. in our newly built youth center, and it's meant for the youth. So we have fun activities like games, food, fellowship, praise and worship, and of course a word. Here at Glad Tidings, we believe in investing in the next generation and ensuring that they'll be able to succeed through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. So, if you're a youth, why don't you come and join us and become part of our family here at Glad Tidings. God bless you. 
Jonah got a call in his life. And you know what Jonah did? He bought a ticket, went the opposite way. I wonder how many of you went the opposite way. Now, I want to make this statement. There's nothing wrong about selling used cars. There is something wrong if you say they'll run forever, but there's nothing wrong. We bought a wonderful new car from a dealership. It was a, a used car. Phenomenal. But if you're not called to sell used cars and you're called to be a pastor, you're going to have a plaid jacket and lie your whole life and be miserable and live hand to mouth and have a little beer money. And a lot of you, the reason the blessing of God isn't on your life, and it's not. Don't pretend like it is. It's not. I know you tell the girls it's all going good. But why do you take them out and then you make them pay? It's not that good. Now listen to me. There's a call of God in your life. And if you try to do what you're not called to do, you will be miserable. Are you hearing me? I said, are you hearing me? And that's what happened to Jonah. He was miserable. And he finally just said, throw me into the sea. This is all my fault. And he found himself in the sea. And God still saved him in the sea. You see, he was called, it says, to a great city. But he didn't want to do it. He didn't want to do it. I can relate. I did not want to be a pastor. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Everybody's mad at God, but they're afraid of God, so they're mad at me. I did not want, and I saw some pastor wives, mm -mm, no, thank you. That's not the will of God for me. And I was so miserable. You don't even know what miserable is. I was so miserable until I said yes. Would you right now join a new club? It's called the club of Yes, Jesus. Yes, Lord. My life isn't mine. I know I've been going the opposite direction. But God, use my life for your glory. Everett Rao, my hero, great man of God, was dying in a rest home with a tumor on his brain and he's blind. And I went to visit him. He didn't see me, obviously. I saw him in the corner, weeping with joy. My master, my master, what an honor. It is to serve you. What an honor it is to bring pleasure to you. And he thanked God for the tumor. And he thanked God that God had trusted him with the tumor. I'm telling you, I'm watching this. And I'm going, Vince Shot, you had better wake yourself up. This great man of God says yes when he has a tumor. Lord, I say yes. Would you say yes to Jesus? Lord, use my life for your glory, for I know I have a call on my life. God bless you, every one of you. I'll see you in church. Come on, sing it.